What's going on, guys? We're back with another replay analysis, and this might be the long, the most amount of letters I've ever seen in a three v three game. Look at all these names. This is this is uh, getting crazy. Steam, please, please don't let, allow th uh, this many characters. Just way, way too much stuff. I want to be a, a, a more complete woman. Who doesn't? To be fair, who doesn't? Anyway, we're doing a sending it. Toaster, he is Challenger Elite. He was playing with some friends that were Rising Star and Challenger 3. So right around Challenger Elite level. And let's go on with the replay. Let's see how this one goes. He got this on Patreon.com slash Gib00. There's a replay tier. I'm finally catching up on some of the backlog that we I've had. And uh, I should be a little bit faster going forward for these. But, you know, thanks for all the patience, guys, from the guys that have already sent some stuff in. Because I know it's been a... Uh, a little bit of a weird uh, time line going on, but I should be able to get him out a little bit quicker now, at least while RLCS is on a break, so look out for him. But yeah, you can get $20 tier for replays. There's other tiers, free play, coaching, just to be friends on Steam or Twitter or whatever. Also, exclusive videos with all those tiers, uh, as well as just the $5 tier if you want to go that route. But uh, let's get into it. A sentient toaster. First, he's rocking the, the candy corn boost. I can respect that. The best boost in the game by far. Face off could have been better. I don't like when people go dead on for face offs generally. And he actually goes a little bit more to the left than I would want. I want him to try and win the ball to the left. Move your card to the right on these face offs. And 3v3s, you should be trying to win them to your opposite side of where you're starting the face off. And that'll give you your best chance right here. Shy almost getting the goal anyway, though. Because of a bad clear by I want to be a more complete woman. Uh, didn't really work out for him there. But here we go. He's just waiting on, like on the bend end. Like on the uh, sorry back end. Can't speak. Right here, though. Upside down in the goal. Should probably rotate behind him. I don't think he has much boost at this point. Let your teammate come in who has more boost and get to that second or first rotation. Because he's going to have more impact on the play uh, with more boost. But they circle right in front of him. So now he's stuck there. Julio's going back for boost. Now he's second rotation. And he uh, he uh, can come up. He wins that ball. Doesn't really lead to much. But at least he's keeping with it. Uh, lots of 50-50s here. That's just going back and forth. Uh, they do get an offensive chance, but he's already uh, rotated out. I'm surprised he didn't go for the boost, though. It's kind of weird. Because maybe he got that boost. I'm not sure. I, I don't think he did. But he goes all the way back. He turns out ball cam. He sees a shot. But at this point, you're way out of the play anyway. Just go uh, uh, pick up your own boost. That one was there. Or at least it just popped. Maybe that's why he didn't time it correctly. It's 10 seconds for the large boost, guys. So um, if you're... Uh, feeling like, eh, it was about 10 seconds ago. Maybe sit on that for an extra second as that third rotation. So it didn't work out there. He goes back. Shots don't happen. Ball gets cleared out. Uh, at this point, he's got to try and attack this ball if possible in this corner. Uh, he's a little scared, but he backs off way too much. At least if you're scared, go a little bit closer to the ball. Like you're going to have teammates that will rotate behind you to be that uh, next goalkeeper. But I understand the corners are weird and you don't want to be that close to the ball because you don't want to make a mistake. But here, you need to move closer to that ball. Be in that general uh, vicinity so when the ball does pop up, if you have to make a minor correction, that's fine. But at least you're in the way of that shot. Instead, he was way too far out when he didn't have to be there because he already had an upside down, was already in his position where he started at. That's why he needs to move forward more so the rotations are complete. Like, it's not about just rotating the net. Um, it's also about when you rotate to net, if someone rotates to net behind you, then you have to slowly start moving out of net and make that next play. You can't just sit in net, both of you, in, in the same exact spot because that doesn't really work out. Got a little bit of a favorable goal here. Uh, so the faceoff kind of works out for him. Again, he goes a little bit too much to the middle. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this, but it does work because the other guy doesn't jump, so he actually wins this ball cleanly. Uh, and the ball actually comes out pretty nicely for him for the rebound shot. Uh, to be announced, should have made a better play here. Probably could have came out and attacked that ball. But again, like the corners are dangerous. And nice pop here. This is a great pass. And then we just get miss after miss. Like upside down goal. <coughs> Whiffs on that. Uh, on Mr. Masiks. He also misses. And then to be announced, just dives away from the ball. Really, really bad uh, play there. But I want to watch from to be announced. Uh, just the start of this play. So face-off comes, he's sitting in net, which is not a bad idea. Once this ball comes off this wall, again, 
Just come out and play this ball. He probably thought it might have hit in the flat part of the wall, so it's going to wrap around a little bit more. <coughs> Which I think is why he doesn't come out. Ball hits the corner. Now he's not out far enough to make the play. Now he's just got to circle back and net at that point. He can't really do much. And at that point, he just panics. He panics. He has the save. He jumps, which is really hard to read at first. And he doesn't actually try and dive out of the way. But then he just dives randomly towards the end. Just a panic try for a save. And actually spins away from the ball. And gets a little bit of a lucky goal here for um, sending a toaster. But it uh, was a good faceoff because the other guy didn't jump in time. So it worked out. And he got the good challenge. Nice play there by uh, a woman, but um, just barely doesn't drop it into the net. Good clear here. Like I like the attack off wall. That's actually a really hard play for challenger um, elite level players, but it was actually a really good clear. He kept the ball high too, which is the most important part. Could have kept it higher, obviously, but this ball is pretty high uh, to begin with. So that's right here. Like I'll show you what's the most important play of this entire play, I should say. Uh, so right here, he gets the clear. But the best play is no one expects it. And see uh, Masik's back there in the little corner. See him driving forward. But then he's actually got to check himself. And he actually turns back a little bit upfield. As soon as he does that, he's going to have no mo uh, momentum for a shot. And this turns into a successful clear. <coughs> he's just got to try and hit to the side. He actually kind of whiffs on it anyway. It still goes over his head. Turns into a pretty good offensive opportunity. He gets bumped out. That's okay. His teammates are there to cover it up. Good clear, though, by Masiks. Let's go to Masiks here real quick. Uh, just watch how calm he is there. I'm not sure if he knew no one uh, was there, but he does put it uh, like into the open field and gets a good opportunity for a uh, passing attempt. But it doesn't work out because it's sending a toaster. He's there. Great challenge. And, again, gets a really nice high clear to midfield. And, again, it so it is dangerous for a midfield clear. When it's directly in the middle, but once you have that height, you add that extra element, it turns the clear so much better. Like, if any of those clears are on the ground, it's really dangerous, and we could see a really good shot coming in. But since it has height, it turns into a really good clear. And honestly, the most important thing on defense is just trying to clear the ball with height, not allowing the other team to get that perfect shot they want. No one's perfect in the air, and around this level of Challenger Elite, by far no one's perfect so it's a really good idea just keep everything in the air when you can oh uh, this was a good challenge he does back up maybe a little bit too long uh but like hindsight 2020 he still makes a pretty decent challenge there and uh circles around for boost he is that third man in rotation a lot i would like to see his teammates kind of rotate in and out a little bit more see again this is like deja vu the upside down in the goal probably doesn't have a lot of boost and again he over rotates when he should have just rotated behind and uh given uh like sending a toaster a clear or like a better chance like at the shot because what upside down should have done circle behind him grab that mid boost and he's got boost as well and can be the next in line and let toaster get that pass and play off <coughs> but he doesn't he moves up and he doesn't have much boost right here. Like, you see him just kind of in no man's land. He finally grabs uh, that mid boost. At least he's up in front now. Can maybe go for a pass. It doesn't really work out. But then we get some bumping plays. Oh, almost a goal. Good stop by 2B announced. And then, oh, uh, this is just a missed opportunity here. He has a chance for a shot. He's got a lot of time as well. Got to stay on the ground for a little bit longer and get a better angle and take that shot. Uh, he just kind of attacks the ball maybe a little bit too quickly and just doesn't get the proper angle on it. Just misreads it off the post a bit. Pretty good center, though. Didn't work out perfectly, but again, he's doing a good job rotating back, grabbing some boost when he can. See right there, upside down. He grabs boost. Now, I want to see if he actually tries to rotate in front of Toaster. He should let Toaster come out for this play. Let's see. See? Once again, upside down. This is where you're fucking up every single time. Greedy rotations. Let your third man come in. Let the third man make a play. Rotate behind, grab some boost, and become that third man. He's the one fucking this up right now for, for this team. And he needs to know that. Sending a toaster, let him know. Stop rotating um, in front of me. Gibbs said so. Like, we all know Toaster's, like, thought about it and thought about telling him. But then he's like, well, I don't want to get into a fight. But now he, he can just be like, Gibbs said so. So stop fucking rotating in front of me. God damn it. Anyway, let's continue on with Toaster's play. So they circle back after, like, that they both go for the ball. It doesn't really lead to anything. I like this play. Just throw to open space. Uh, good play by 2B announced there. 
Just throwing it back out. He, uh, uh, Tosha couldn't do much. Like, I do like him trailing this play, just to make sure for a little bit. <coughs> so he trails the play, and then sees like Tuba announce has it. Makes sense. Then just retreat out, grab the boost. He, he, uh, he couldn't grab that boost. Circles back, grabs that uh, boost by his net, turns into that third rotation again, makes a good challenge. He's just doing clean rotations, and this is what you should do. Just clean rotations when you can. Get involved when you have more boost than you don't. If you have no boost, generally you want to rotate out unless you have a golden opportunity. Uh, this play is just a whiff here. Uh, I think Julio threw him off a bit because Julio jumps up as well. Again, Julio o uh, over rotating here. This is Tosha's play. Luckily, though, Tosha whiffs. Just a bad aerial. He's going a little too fast underneath it. I always talk about this. Be very careful about your ground speed and ground direction when going for aerials. He kind of fucks that one up, but Julio is there to clear it out. Luckily, uh, looks like Toaster does rotate in front this time of upside down goal. Uh, upside down goal is pretty far back. <coughs> I can kind of see why here. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to be on Toaster's side most of the time for this one. I, I just feel like it's Toaster's right after all those times getting uh, over rotated. But he's doing a good job. Just, just being involved for a play, but no one went to retreat out. Good stop by Julio. Now, good play here. Uh, Toaster's in a pretty decent spot. Well, what I want to see is actually where uh, his teammate is. Yep, he's center. That's exactly what you want in a three-man rotation. I don't feel like sw uh, switching off Toaster. But when one of you guys brings him in the corner, one guy should follow behind him in the corner in case he loses a 50-50 or if Blue just clears it back that way. And then the other one should be going somewhere like around the center of the field for a pass and play, and that's what they do there, so... Good play there. I like it. That's basically a textbook position for the most part. <coughs> a good shot by Sandy Toaster. I would have preferred to pass off the back wall. Because once it gets too low there, like it was still at some height. So to be announced, couldn't do as great of a clear as he probably wanted. Uh, but like if you can't get it high enough, like your best bet is to try and throw it off that back wall high. And usually your aerials are going to land lower. And you might be able to squeeze it in under the crossbar. That's like one thing that I have noticed is a lot of times when you're going for your rolls, at least for me personally, I hit them lower than I want. So then you just aim for that back wall and you might just drop it into the net on accident. A good retreat in here. This is a little bit dangerous. It's a tough play for a woman, so I can see why he's going for it. Uh, but once he goes up, he realizes woman might have this. <coughs> but again, he goes underneath the ball a little bit too much. He doesn't actually go to the side either. Just kind of whiffs on the aerial. Got to work on the aerial game just a bit. Uh, now with the new train and the, uh, all that's involved, like you can work on a lot more uh, aerials by looking up a lot of uh, good train packs. I don't know too many good train packs yet. It's brand new at the point of, of when I'm making this video. It's been two or three days. Uh, but um, I'll probably make a video at some point about some really good trainer packs. To keep a lookout for. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. A little bit of a mess here in the center of the field. Getting a little bumped out as well. Just looking for boost. That's understandable. Now he's just trying to get back. He, he has no boost, so this is going to be rough. Ooh, just spins the wrong way here. This is actually a bad spin around. You generally... Like, it's hard. Because, like, y your first instinct is the ball is going, say, to his left, I guess, technically. So he wants to spin to the left, but you got to realize how fast it's going and how fast it's going to hit the wall and bounce back into the middle. He just spins the wrong way there. <coughs> uh, luckily, his teammate helps him out there. Sorry for the coughs, guys. <coughs> and they get the clear. Good play by the blue side. Just throwing it to open field. Trying to throw this out. This is a good challenge. I like this because upside down comes back to net. So now is when... Uh, like I said, toaster should be coming out, but upside down, you motherfucker. I see you again, trying to over-rotate. He almost over-rotates and bumps into Toaster. Super close play there. Just got to be careful, but Toaster makes the play. Just got to make the stop there. And now we go into overtime. Cheating up here. He, uh, he can grab this boost. He, ooh. This is a really bad play by Toaster. So, at this point, you have the choice. Boost or ball? If you can grab both, that's the ideal situation. But if you grab neither, that is the worst possible thing. He could have done any of those three that he wanted. Maybe even grab boost and ball. Maybe it would probably be a little bit of a tough play. But he doesn't grab either. He can't make up his mind. He's thinking about going for the ball. Then he decides, I'm going to go for boost. Then he thinks about going for the ball. 
Doesn't grab any of them. That's a terrible play. Um, it allows Meeseeks to get boost and the ball. And now they're in a bad spot here. Luckily, they get out of it. But still, he still has no boost because of that decision. Then he gets blown up. This whole decision right now is all about that uh, decision at the faceoff boost or ball. You have to grab one or the other. Don't uh, grab neither. That would be the worst possible play. And they've had... Uh, blue sides have the offensive pressure this entire time all because of that play to uh, start it off and that's what it is sometimes it's just that catalyst of like that one factor that starts that whole uh offensive uh play but they finally get out just barely misses the shot there oh no he couldn't finish it so these are always tough when you're kind of trying to get a rebound but it goes too high the problem is when you do your single jump you always want to use your second jump to change your angle for your shot but you always forget that you have a double jump to get higher to change your angle so the ball goes lower as well. Just barely couldn't reach that. Really unfortunate. He's going to be killing himself for that one uh, when it's in overtime and it has such an easy shot there. But that's all right. It happens. Like, ball's going fast. It's hard to read the bounces every single time. It's going to happen. you got to bounce back and just keep going. Here, he should be uh, grabbing some welfare boost. That's good. Now he goes for the 100 boost. Smart play there. Just want to make sure you have some boost at least in case something weird happens. Here is aerial for really no reason at the start. Again, you want to keep control of your car as long as possible. Don't aerial if you don't have to. Keep the car on the ground so you can change your direction quicker. He goes in the air for no re uh, real reason at all. But it does work out. He just throws it to the side. But nothing comes of it. When he could have had a better play if he just stayed on the ground a little bit longer. Now, this play, I would start moving up a lot. So, right here, I would be moving up like crazy because uh, the woman has no uh, momentum going forward. So, this ball is not going to really get hit that hard. I would be moving up very, very quickly here, waiting for that rebound. Sorry about that. Um, and then, uh, me seeks. <coughs> uh, gets the hit, but doesn't really do much with it. Works out. He does challenge. It just didn't really work out for him there. Julio making the play. One more center. This is when you should be moving center a bit. There it is. Ooh, just barely misses. I would have been more center at this point, but there is uh, upside down as well. Got to worry about him. He's been trying to inch forward a little bit too much uh, than what he normally should be doing. They circle back. That's fine to go past uh, upside down because he's got the faster car, and you want to make sure you win that challenge on defense. I don't mind uh, over-rotating there. When you have more momentum, if you have a better play, go for it at that point. Much better off. It's just when you have no boost is when I worry about it. Oh, good tip play there by upside down to Julio. Let's see who's on defense, actually. it's uh, Of course it is. Of course it is. I want to be a more complete woman. Well, plays like this are not going to help. Should never have came out for this. This is definitely Julio's ball or whatever his name is. Hulid. Uh... Just comes out as that third man. When it's midfield, you just got to let these plays come to you sometimes. When it's a super risky play like that. Doesn't work out. Hulid gets the play. Sending a toaster. Gets the win. Luckily for him after missing that shot in overtime. But well done by him. Wasn't that bad of a game. He's got to work on his uh, aerials a bit. But really, I would talk to your boy uh, upside down, man. His position has been pretty bad. It could cost you a lot of games. Let him know, man. Just rotate behind me. I can make the next hit. And that's one of the most important things in threes. Just getting that clean rotation. Getting that trust in with teammates. Having that trust in the third man is one of the hardest things to do. But it really does help a team of three. But that'll do it for this replay, guys. We went a little long. Not too long. But uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.